Hello viewers, welcome back. Today we are reviewing a micro brand called a Tornic Ravel. This is a Tornic Ravel TR660. And before we get into the specifics of the watch itself here, I'm gonna do a, a, a brief history lesson on Tornic Ravel as a brand, because Tornic Ravel, this brand, was actually bought by a chap called Bill Yao. And Bill Yao, many of you will know, is the kind of entrepreneur watch genius behind Mark II watches, which aren't that big here in the UK and Europe, but are big in the States. And Bill Yao was interested in his Tornic Ravel brand because Tornic Ravel was essentially a, a military watch provider in the early 60s. Now, the US military was looking for a watch for its kind of commando unit. They tested a whole bunch of watches, and that included the Submariner. Most importantly, it included the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms. Now, the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms actually came out really, really well in these tests. So what happened was essentially a clear winner out of a, a market scan. And interestingly, the, the contract wasn't awarded to Belova. Actually, there was a, a kind of an in with Belova because the uh, U.S. Army General, former U.S. Army General, a guy called Omar Bradley, was actually the chairman of Belova, and they still didn't win the contract. So it was actually a, a very, um, probably fair test of the watches that were available in the market for, for the time. Now then, the problem was Blancpain 50 Fathoms, clear winner. There was a, a Buy American Act that was passed in the 30s, 1933, that meant that for the military, the U.S. military, they had to find domestic, essentially, suppliers rather than uh, foreign suppliers to try and kind of promote domestic goods production. So that led them to the challenge. They had a clear winner, the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, and yet they needed an American watch. Belova wasn't good enough. Um, so what happened? Well, this guy called Alan Tornek was actually just a kind of clever dude who rebadged a Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, which is why this one looks very similar to a Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, with a new dial, a Tornic Ravel dial. The, the Tornic bit coming from his name, and Ravel is kind of like a spoonerism of the town where Blanc Pan actually make their, their watches. So in the end, what happened was they won the, this chap, Alan Tornick, won the contract. There were essentially about a thousand of these Tornick Ravels produced, the reference to TR900, and the kind of crucial elements from um, the military's perspective was the watch had to be submersible around 400 feet, I believe, and it had to be anti-magnetic. So those criteria were met with essentially a blanc pan with a new face, uh, sorry, and, and a new dial, and off they went. They supplied them to these commandos, and unfortunately not many survive. So if you have a little Google around the, the TR900, you'll see that they are going for astronomical amounts of money. Fast forward back to Bill Yao. Bill Yao bought the rights for Tornic Rayville, and we don't know how much he paid for it, but we think probably not very much money because, let's face it, it's not a household name. And then this is the creation. So it's a very similar... Uh, dial to a Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, as you can see. And what we have is a, a bead blasted case here, which you should be able to see quite nicely. And with this bead blasted case, we have a domed case back and a slightly domed sapphire crystal here as well. Now, on top of this um, bead blasted case, we have an acrylic insert with a super luminova um, indice at 15, 30, and 45, so that we've got great visibility for this rotating bezel, which rotates around 180 clicks of the, uh, around the dial with a very nice and firm movement, but also a little bit of backwards motion to wiggle it into the correct place, which is very nice. And in addition to this, we have some nice dimensions. The watch is about 14.7 millimeters thick, which is, um, a little bit thick actually for me personally, especially when you've got a NATO underneath it. Um, but it's quite a nice lug to lug of 48.5 and it's got that winning 40 millimeter width. So compared to the original TR900, this watch is about the same thickness of 14.7 millimeters, but it's slightly shorter 
uh, and it's slightly uh, less wide in, in diameter. So proportions, really nice and modern, not too big, and it has a lovely 20 millimeter lug to lug, whereas the original had a rather frustrating 90 millimeters. I've got a Zenith El Primero with a 90 millimeter lug to lug in it, really annoys me because it's hard to find straps that fit perfectly. They're either 18 or the 20 and you know, you either have to squish them in or there's a little bit of a gap. So the dial itself um, is very plain black and the, the sapphire crystal has anti-reflective coating. So winning combination so far. There is no date on this watch and there is this very kind of iconic moisture indicator on the dial which will immediately hark back your, your minds probably to the 50 fathoms. This doesn't work, the moisture is indicated with this watch because these days it's much easier to make a watch that, that is actually water resistant than it probably was in the 60s. So this is just a kind of style icon cue from the original watch. But all in all, a very nice, well put together set of uh, metrics. So final thoughts on the watch. Well, I really like it. It's uh, a great grab and go watch that is essentially forming the role of a kind of daily beater for me in my collection. I think it's slightly too thick, to be honest, for, for me, for daily wear. And I do always look at it thinking there's a date on the dial, but that's mainly because I only really buy watches with dates. So this is essentially my one of my only watches that doesn't have a date. So that's a, a slight criticism. It doesn't really worry me that this is a kind of very bog standard movement. I think for a watch at this price point, there is a huge amount going for it. Um, I think the sapphire crystal, the acrylic insert, the bead blast case, you know, you've got the, the lovely styling cues of the moisture indicator. Although it doesn't work, it's still a nice feature that, that actually gives the, the watch some character. Now, for, for me, um, I think these are similar to, to, to propositions a bit like Halios Seaforth, so micro brand that actually are gaining a bit of a cult status. And I think these could appreciate quite a bit in the future, particularly if Bill Yao does something similar to um, to what Halios have done and, and really kind of supercharge the brand and you know continue to issue new watches. These early ones could be really quite collectible. So Let's see what happens to Tonic Rovel as a brand. I really hope that Bill Yao kind of injects some more creativity, to be honest. Um, I like the fact this harks back to the original, but I think to some extent it's quite an easy, easy pattern to follow because let's face it, the original was just a kind of remake of, of Long Power 50 Fathoms anyway, so there wasn't really much originality there. And this is a remake of a remake. So let's maybe see whether Tony Rovel can bring something out of the bag, which is um, slightly new, slightly novel, slightly kind of original. But all in all, really interesting piece. I think certainly if you're wearing this to a, uh, a watch meet, you'll get a lot of interesting comments on what is actually a, a quite unique and very interesting daily watch beta tool watch proposition. So I hope you've enjoyed my um, little video. Please let me know if you've got any comments and um, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.